The Lord be with you. We continue to hear about the Lord's gifts and promises. Our service tonight, that of evening prayer, uh, page 243 here in the hymnal. Our first hymn is 437. Let us open with prayer. Heavenly Father, direct our attention to your word. Let us not be distracted by things that are going on in the world, but focus on the things that are unseen. Eternal life in your Son, which is the gift you give in your word and your promises. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Jesus Christ is the light of the world. A light no darkness can overcome. Stay with us, Lord, for it is evening. And the day is almost over. Let the light scatter the darkness. And then
of the universe, who led your people Israel by a pillar of cloud by day, and a pillar of fire by night, enlighten our darkness by the light of your Christ. May his word be a lamp to our feet and a light to our path, for you are merciful, and you love your whole creation, and we, your creatures, glorify you, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Let us pray. Let the incense of our repentant prayer ascend before you, O Lord. Let your loving kindness descend on us that with purified minds we may sing your praises with the church on earth and the whole heavenly host and may glorify you forever. Amen.
The first reading is from the first epistle of Paul to the Corinthians, the 11th chapter. In the following instructions, I do not commend you, because when you come together, it is not for the better, but for the worse. For in the first place, when you come together as a church, I hear there are divisions among you. And I believe it in part, for there must be factions among you, in order that those who are genuine among you may be recognized. When you come together, it is not the Lord's Supper that you eat. For in eating, one goes ahead with his own meal. One goes hungry, another gets drunk. What? Do you not have houses to eat and drink in? Or do you despise the church of God and humiliate those who have nothing? What shall I say to you? Shall I commend you in this? No, I will not. For I received from the Lord what I also delivered to you, that the Lord Jesus, on the night when he was betrayed, took bread. And when he had given thanks, he broke it and said, This is my body, which is for you. Do this in remembrance of me. In the same way also, he took the cup after supper, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood. Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. For as often as you eat this bread and drink the cup, you proclaim the Lord's death until he comes. O Lord, have mercy on us. Thanks be to God. The second reading is from the Gospel of Luke, the 12th chapter. I tell you, my friends, do not fear those who kill the body, and after that have nothing more that they can do. But I will warn you whom to fear. Fear him who, after he has killed, has authority to cast into hell. Yes, I tell you, fear him. Are not five sparrows sold for two pennies? And not one of them is forgotten before God. Why, even the hairs of your head are all numbered. Fear not, you are of more value than many sparrows. And I tell you, everyone who acknowledges me before men, the Son of Man also will acknowledge before the angels of God. But the one who denies me before men will be denied before the angels of God. And everyone who speaks a word against the Son of Man will be forgiven. But the one who blasphemes against the Holy Spirit will not be forgiven. And when they bring you before the synagogues and the rulers and the authorities, do not be anxious about how you should defend yourself or what you should say. For the Holy Spirit will teach you in that very hour what you ought to say. O Lord, have mercy on us. Thanks be to God. The third reading is from the Gospel of Matthew, the fifth chapter. You have heard that it was said to those of old, you shall not murder, and whoever murders will be liable to judgment. But I say to you that everyone who is angry with his brother will be liable to judgment. Whoever insults his brother will be liable to the council. And whoever says, you fool, will be liable to the hell of fire. So if you are offering your gift at the altar, and there remember that your brother has something against you, leave your gift there before the altar and go. First, be reconciled to your brother, and then come and offer your gift. Come to terms quickly with your accuser while you are going with him to court, lest your accuser hand you over to the judge and the judge to the guard, and you be put in prison. Truly I say to you, you will never get out until you have paid the last penny. O Lord, have mercy on us. Thanks be to God. 
In many and various ways, God spoke to his people of old by the prophets. But now in these last days, he has spoken to us by his Son. Grace, mercy, and peace be to you from God our Father and our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Amen. For in the first place, when you come together as a church, I hear that there are divisions among you. It hurts to hear of division right now, doesn't it? Because many of us are divided against our will. But yet, we see this all the time, not just physical division, but spiritual. People routinely get offended because not everyone can commune at this altar without first teaching, instruction, and agreement in God's word. But now parts of society have been closed off for a time. We cannot do everything we want. We cannot go to all the places that we choose. We might be separated from family, friends, from serving in our vocation. Separation is painful, but it is also real. And we certainly do not want to hear about death right now, but we need to. In fact, it has been ordained by God. For as often as you eat this bread and drink this cup, you proclaim the Lord's death. We proclaim his death because Christ is alive and he is coming back. And then this world with all this disease and sickness and death will be destroyed forever. And so the coronavirus cannot win, even if it takes your body right now. For our hope is not in avoiding something we can't see. It is trusting in Christ who already died for us. For his death is our victory over fear and over guilt. So don't fear death or what happens to your body. Christ's holy body was offered in your place, opening up free access to God the Father. Whoever believes these words has exactly what they say, forgiveness of sins. Our Lord removes fear and guilt by taking away our sins and declaring us holy to God so that death has no power over us. Because in Jesus' resurrection, there is hope for the dying. And we are all dying, after all, all infected with disobedience and rebellion against God. But life in Christ is more powerful than death. For our Lord is coming back for us to destroy death forever. Where there is forgiveness, death cannot separate us from Christ. The division Christ would have us most concerned about is not the six-foot rule. It's not physical at all. It is spiritual. For we are to be united in his word in holy faith confessing God's truth, encouraging one another. For in the first place, when you come together as a church, I hear that there are divisions among you, and I believe it in part, for there must be factions among you in order that those who are genuine among you may be recognized. This is why we have so many churches, so much division within Christianity, we do not all follow Christ completely and fully. Some compromise in order to please others, in order to attract sinners by worldly enticements, in order to make Christianity more reasonable to them. But to teach what helps people get along right now and come together is not God-pleasing or to treat communion like a community potluck is to deny Christ in what he has said and who he is. 
for his divine teaching in the meal of his body and blood are worth more than heaven and earth. For the Lord's will counts more than the opinions of this world and more than the lives of us all. Our unity in Christ gives life, not just on earth, but eternal life with God forever. But there is only death in our ideas, in our judgments, in our motives, because we cannot love God in them. And so you must die to sin, you must humble yourself to live with God. So don't live by what others say. Be right with God in Christ and serve him alone. For in Christ we do not even have to fear death. Follow me, he invites. I will not lead you astray, even if you have to walk through the valley of the shadow of death. Fear the true God. In that way, you don't have to live and die based on the latest news reports, your friends' emotions, or the condition of your own health. For God's acceptance is better than the world's rejection. I tell you, my friends, do not fear those who kill the body and after that have nothing more that they can do. But I warn you whom to fear. Fear him who, after he has killed, has authority to cast into hell. Yes, I tell you, fear him. We have a lot of fear and anxiousness around us right now, but not the right kind and not enough. For we are not to fear created things, even germs and viruses, more than the creator who made us. This is idolatry. So turn away from it. Do not think that you can save your own soul if you just think about things enough. For hell is much worse than any amount of seclusion. Isn't hell called the outer darkness? It's an eternal permanent self-quarantine from God's presence and his favor. And this is why we need the holy death of Christ. Not more news reports of sinners getting what they deserve, the wages of sin. Reports of bodies piling up in overflowing hospitals has no power to change you, to make you right with God. The death of sinners, even your own death, cannot help you. But you were baptized into the death of Christ, the only begotten Son of God, who already died and rose. And his death is stronger than all earthly death. And now you are too. Whoever believes these words has exactly what they say, forgiveness of sins. We're to believe forgiveness and victory over death is ours right now. For the Lord offered his own body and blood to his Father for your sin. He paid the penalty of death with his blood, with his death, to free you. And so now you are right with God. Everything is right, including you. For God has not destined us for wrath, but to obtain salvation through our Lord Jesus Christ. Do not fear what happens to your body. Haven't you already died with Christ? For you were baptized to live forever. To be free to God. To be motivated by love. For Jesus cannot die anymore. And neither can the one who hopes in him. So our unity is not just getting together 
physically being in one big group. We know when that happens that sin overtakes all groups and families and gatherings. Even in congregations too, we see anger and frustration and sin boil over in large groups where there is no law, fear and panic and mob mentality can take over. And these are not signs of fellowship. Fellowship has to do with God, not just us and our thoughts and opinions. True unity is having the same spirit of Christ. One God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. It is not living in fear of earthly things, but loving and confessing the one true God. For we are called to be united together in the source of life, God himself. For faith is living by this hope that this world is not our home. The grave is not our final destination. So we don't have to live in selfishness or darkness or social distance ourselves from God anymore. He's come to us, Christ. For Christians are to live, to walk by the Spirit, dying to their sin, holding to the truth of Scripture against error, even when it's unpleasant or it means persecution. So human division, being separated, is not the worst thing that can happen. The worst thing is a fake unity. It is losing hope in Christ. That is our greatest danger that we face in this world. There must be factions among you in order that those who are genuine among you may be recognized. This spiritual division shows that we have unity with God and we are not trying to please men. So live in God, who is free. You are free to love others for the sake of Christ. But you are not to love others more than God, who is the source of all love. God has granted us his great and very precious promises, so that through them you may, may become partakers of the divine nature having escaped from the corruption that is in the world because of sinful desire. We are free and we rejoice because the Holy Spirit in God's peace cannot be quarantined. No man-made rules or laws can stop them. And so neither can your joy or love in the Holy Spirit. The wind blows where it wishes, and you hear it sound, but you do not know where it comes from or where it goes. So it is with everyone who is born of the Spirit. We are to be free from sin, at peace with God, even while our bodies are at the mercies of many dangers. You are free in your minds by the power of the gospel. Christ continues to be faithful, creating unity in himself by forgiving sick sinners. He even promises to forgive you in his word every time you hear it. So believe. And he promises to be with us when he gives us his most holy body and blood. Every single time, according to his institution and word, until he returns at the last day. His promise and word cannot fail. It is our rock. So Jesus will never avoid us. He never withholds the benefits of his salvation. Christ reigns. He lives to rule your conscience in love and joy. He fills you with his spirit of peace knitting us together as one body, his body. And it starts with being forgiven, having the knowledge of Christ. So we are to take fellowship seriously, 
which is created by the gifts of fellowship that Christ our Lord has instituted and promised. And this matters more than other people. It matters even more than our own body, which has already been saved. Because we have the body of Jesus, dead and now alive, and offered to us in the Holy Supper. Amen. The peace of God, which passes all understanding, guard and keep your hearts and minds in Christ Jesus. Amen. In peace, let us pray to the Lord. Lord for the peace from above and for our salvation, let us pray to the Lord. Lord for the peace of the whole world, for the well-being of the church of God, and for the unity of all, let us pray to the Lord. For this holy house and for all who offer here their worship and praise, let us pray to the Lord. For Matthew and Rich, for all pastors in Christ, for all servants of the church, and for all the people, let us pray to the Lord. Have mercy. For 
Donald, for all public servants, for the government and those who protect us, that they may be upheld and strengthened in every good deed. Let us pray to the Lord. For those who work to bring peace, justice, health, and protection in this and every place, let us pray to the Lord. For those who bring offerings, for those who do good works in this congregation, those who toil, those who sing, and all the people here present who await from the Lord great and abundant mercy, let us pray to the Lord have mercy. For favorable weather, for an abundance of the fruits of the earth, and for peaceful times, let us pray to the Lord have mercy. For our deliverance from all affliction, wrath, danger, and need, let us pray to the Lord have mercy. For healing, deliverance from those who are sick and those who care for them, for those who are isolated, that they may be given consolation in your spirit, let us pray to the Lord For the faithful who have gone before us and are with Christ, let us give thanks to the Lord. Thanks be to God. Help, save, comfort, and defend us, gracious Lord. Rejoicing in the fellowship of all the saints, let us commend ourselves, one another, and our whole life to Christ our Lord. To you, o Lord. O God, from whom come all holy desires, all good counsels, and all just works, give to us, your servants, that peace which the world cannot give, that our hearts may be set to obey your commandments, and also that we, being defended from the fear of our enemies, may live in peace and quietness. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Taught by our Lord and trusting his promises, we are bold to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Let us bless the Lord. Thanks be to God. The Almighty and merciful Lord, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit bless and preserve you.